Okay. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, Dr. J here, and um, I'm excited to have one of my very, very good friends, Dr. Bart Anderson, joining me today. And uh, Dr. Bart and I have known each other 20 years or so, somewhere in that vicinity. Bart, I, don't, I can't even count out the years. This time just flies by so much. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and uh, you know, we became friends. Uh, we we uh, met in a, in a coaching group and, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of similarities, a lot of similar core values, you know, and then we got our families together and vacation together. And we worked on a few different projects together. And you introduced me to a new program that you've been working on uh, with, a, with, a, with your team that I thought has real value for my clients. And uh, because I talk about all the time, how important it is to make sure that you're congruent with any service you add to your practice that's congruent with your philosophy, that's congruent with your business model. We just don't add services to generate revenue because that's completely out of integrity. Yep. And, um, and we both know the importance of uh, expanding and growing a business. You, you owned many clinics and were very successful. And uh, so I want to touch on what you're doing. Um, you know, kind of how it works and how it fits into the practice and how it may benefit a client's considering. So, you know, we'll get into all those questions here in just a minute, but just tell a little bit about yourself, maybe something that I didn't share. Um, well, um, I guess you probably know this, but I, I come from a family of chiropractors. We've got nine chiropractors in my family. And uh, so chiropractic has always been my thing. I've always been very passionate about that. And, and then of course, beyond chiropractic, just wellness and, you know, just how else can we tie that in? Um, I'm a Logan grad, for those of you who love that or don't like it, but that's who, that's where we all come from. And uh, yeah, we, you and I met in a coaching group, which was vital to my personal growth um, and professional growth. And I think that's, of course, how we we jive so much. And so as my practice grew, I, I then back, gosh, this has been I don't know, 10, 12 or 15 years ago, began to expand practices. So I additionally, I initially added associates. So the catch phrase then was an associate driven practice. And and then as we as that grew, like you, we began to add locations and, and, and that kind of thing. And then that's when I came across um, actually a the younger brother of a classmate of mine from Logan. And this guy's name is Damon Walton. And Damon was doing the same thing. So it's a, we kind of knew each other. We were both doing the same thing. And ultimately, we combined forces and uh, became a, a, a partnership. Um, he and I and a couple of his brother and a couple of other chiropractors. And we had a company called Cairo Systems. And that was all about helping doctors launch into practice and, and, and you know, get them going. And then they would buy their practice and basically um, move from that then into doing the same thing for a franchise. Well, a chiropractic franchise was, at the time was one of the biggest franchises uh, in, in, the, in the chiropractic field and helped them grow their startup process. So we really operating in that, that new practice, young practice, chiropractic coaching concept. We ended up separating ways with them. And, and lo and behold, what a practice that I had sold long ago, six or seven years ago, um, I ended up coming circling back there to my hometown. And as you know, I took, you know, I took ownership back of that practice and, and so sort of went back into practice, but still had associates there. And then that's when, to your point, looking at um, adding services and looking at expanding our model of wellness, that's when we um, began to incorporate weight loss. Dr. Damon, my partner, had been developing weight loss in clinics he owned and had been doing that. And I'd kind of followed along with it, interested, but not fully uh, engaged in it at that point. And then as he began to explain to me, some of which I'll explain later, just some of the, some of the genetic testing and some of the other things that we do, it just really resonates. So I started weight loss as a ancillary process in my, in my main practice. Um, and it just took off and it was so congruent for us. It helped so many people, people who I've been adjusting for years in my wellness program once a week or once every two weeks or whatever, but they were 50 pounds overweight. And, and so I had now a solution to that piece of the puzzle and it just took off. We had great changes and I just got more and more passionate about it. And, you know, ultimately now I'm a partner in the Activate Metabolics business, working to grow that, um, working to help other, other, other docs understand it, uh, which we'll talk about. And, and, and also, I'm still in clinic a couple days a week, just helping people continue to, to toward wellness. So um, that's my kind of my story, kind of an evolution of, of different pieces of the puzzle. But, it, but it's, it's been a fun journey in chiropractic for me. That's cool. And yeah, we have a very similar journey in that regard. And, 
and uh, we keep in touch, always checking in with each other because you're always doing stuff that's, you know, you're thinking ahead, you're a visionary. And I hope to think I'm the same way as well too, not just from, you know, being able to expand our entrepreneurship, but more importantly, helping people, really helping them maximize their business, helping them, giving them the tools necessary to, to bust through the, the blocks and restrictions that hold them back from really achieving the type of success that they desire. Can you explain specifically what is Activate, uh, uh, Activate Metabolics and mm -hmm. how long has it been around? Sure. Yeah. In a nutshell, I mean, when somebody just says, hey, bottom line, what is this thing? It's a genetic based weight loss program. So sometimes that word's, you know, it's, it's exciting. Other times it's intimidating. But what we do is some, some genetic testing, which basically takes a look at genetic factors, just like we have genetic differences on the outside, we got them on the inside too. And it's looking at specific factors that in that that influence and, and, and control our metabolism. And so that testing allows us to identify some ideal eating, for, for an individual, ideal fitness for an individual, and some actually some other behavioral factors related to different chemicals and hormones. So that's kind of the hub. That's the unique piece of the puzzle. But then the Activate Metabolics takes that, couples that with an overall program of weight loss. And we, we are always um, quick to note, this is not a product-based program, although we have some products that are a piece of the program. This is not a, you know, we're not, we're not doing a single product for, you know, X amount of time. We, we, it's not a short-term fix. We, we want to talk about lifestyle with our people. Um, this is not a short 30 day, 60 day, 45, you know, it's, it's, it's how do they understand their body? How do they understand how to eat, how to do their fitness properly so they can lose weight and control their weight. So we've taken that concept and then incorporated the science, the genetics and computerized body composition analysis. So we take that science and then we put that into a system a system which has all the training and all the teaching and, uh, and actually develop it, which I know we're going to talk about later in a, a non-doctor dependent format. And then we want to, under, uh, we've put together a support model for the weight loss clients, for the weight loss patients that's staff driven, app driven, uh, that kind of a thing. So in a nutshell, and I'll summarize all that, genetic based weight loss in a, in a program of systems and tools and technology that, that, that can be easily implemented into any clinic really. When I reached out to you and you told me you were doing this and you were kind of giving us some feedback of what, you know, what Activate looked like. And, and as you know, we've had weight loss in our office. We had a di different product for a very long time and it was successful um, in results, but like many weight loss programs to a certain extent, you know, there is, uh, you know, people who fall off and they gain their weight back. But what really impressed me about the program that you do right from the start, is Activate teaches people how to eat properly. And the program that we did previously, it was a lot of product based. And again, got good results, nothing bad with that. But it didn't really change the habit and behavior of understanding what it's like to change your lifestyle so you can create and develop eat, healthy eating habits that you can carry on for the rest of your life so you can have sustainability and have long-term success and that's what really attracted. And then the second thing that attracted, of course, was the genetic testing. You know, it wasn't a one size fits all. And um, so, of course, Pam got interested in it, started to look into it, and, and we've converted over into an activate and been incredibly successful. And like anything before I bring to my clients, I have to test it. How does it work? Sure. Is it effective? Before I recommend it and put my endorsement behind it, and of course, I know love and trust you and I know it's good, but we have to work it first to, you know, to be able to, it's like anything and anybody who's listening to this who knows me, I say this all the time, you can't sell what you don't own. So you have to get in it, you have to do it, you have to you know, experience it. And the results have been nothing short of spectacular. So I love that aspect of it. Can you talk about the aspect of teaching people to change their lifestyles, the habits, how they see food, and getting them engaged to change their eating habits right from the start. Yeah, for sure. And, and you nailed it. Um, a, a huge piece of the puzzle that a, that a lot of people I find are guarded against. But then once we explain like, hey, we're not selling any shakes or bars or box food, and it's not even supplement dependent because a lot of people don't want to get into that. I got to be wheeling and dealing and signing people up for auto ships and all that kind of a thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's not for everybody, right? And so 
Um, that is a key piece of the puzzle. And by the way, side note, Pam has done a phenomenal job of transition. Um, that's not an easy thing to do when you've been entrenched in a particular system and program a way of doing things for 10 years. Um, she's made that that fantastic. So I'm really proud of her for that. And it's been fun helping her. But yeah, when you, when you just think about, um, part of it is when we have this conversation, it attracts people, not just about the genetic testing, but about the fact that this is, folk, this is about getting this person, an individual, really to move toward a focused lifestyle change. Let's face it, most of the people who come in, many of the people who come in, whether they're overweight, obese, morbidly obese, they've tried a lot of things. They find that most of them are short-term thinking. When you hear the word diet, you think short-term, super restrictive, miserable, and that's why I can't sustain it. So by, by design, we're gonna start a little, a little shorter, a little more restrictive because we have to get the body to wake up. We gotta get it into that fat burning metabolism. We gotta get it detox, those kinds of things. But then quickly, literally within six, six weeks, we're gonna start adding different foods back in based upon what we get from this genetic report. So immediately they can see the light at the end of the tunnel. They can see how they're gonna move from, okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty tough here in the beginning, that's a relative term, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, that wasn't hard at all. And as long as I lose the weight I lost, I'm good with it. But you got to build it out to where now this is, this doesn't feel like a diet. This is just how you're supposed to eat. This is just the best way for you to be thinking about eating. And that does include when they, you know, move back into eating starches, grains, legumes, that kind of thing. Because most times when people are on a diet, they, they're not getting any of that. And, and so that's a good piece for them to just see how it's going to be expanding and where if I just live my life kind of like this, if this is how I'm eating most of the time, 90% of the time or you know, 95% of the time, I get that, hey, it's my wife's birthday today, which your wife's birthday. I'm going to go out today and I'm going to enjoy myself. It's not my way, but I'm going to enjoy. Then I just come back into this pattern that where I'm supposed to be. And people buy that and they, they get it and they can see that next step. And that's how a lifestyle is developed. A lifestyle cannot be shifted and changed because I enroll in something today. A lifestyle can't be changed in 30 or 40 days. It really can't. We talk about habits being formed and stuff in 30 days. Personally, I think it's usually longer than that, right? And so, um, but, but, you know, a lifestyle, the bad habits that I've adopted over decades of living, the position of getting myself into a situation where my chemistry and my, 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 my body makeup, my composition is so out of whack, that can't be changed fully in, in 30 or 40 days. So that's it, man. It's just the long-term thinking and taking science that you can incorporate into that is, is the magical combo, in my opinion. You know, um, the first thing we did was, is uh, obviously we did the genetic testing and I was so blown away by the, the depth and detail of that genetic analysis. Mm -hmm. But what it really comes down to and what I've learned is, and I kind of suspected it, but it broke down what my macros should be as far mm -hmm. as how much fat I should consume, how much protein, how much carbohydrates. And interesting, as I talked to Pam, as she continues to onboard more and more people, Interesting how many people should be consuming way more fats than they do. And of course, less carbs than they do. Proteins are kind of right around the same percent for most people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, based on body's type and size. But that's what blew me away. And then because when I did keto back two years ago, I did amazing on it. So I know I'm a fat burning individual. I need to consume fat. That's what how my body operates at its efficient level to maximize my health output and energy. And then assessing the type of workouts I should be doing. I love doing HIIT workouts. Yep. My profile says I should be doing a majority HIIT workout. So it really confirms stuff that I'm doing. And I think it's a real wake up for when a client sees this and it goes, this is me. This is what really, there's no guesswork in it. Speak a little bit to the genetic assessment, not so much the testing, because it's pretty standard, right? The sure. assessment and, and really how it guides people moving forward. Yeah, well, and, you know, for you, you're somebody who has fortunately has learned through example, you know, both in your in your eating and in your fitness. So you've had that positive experience, be it luck or just trial and error or whatever. But understand, 
you're not the 80 or 90 percent of the right of the, of the people out there who they're all trying to do the same thing. I mean, the most common one that we see is a female who is doing cardio and she walks with her friends four or five days a week. And, you know, Sally, she lost weight, but it didn't do anything for me. What the heck? Right. So that is a way of defining and delineating. You might learn that through experience, but we're taking that. And what that does is it's going to look at those 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 genes. It's going to tell us what it does metabolically with nutrition, then it's going to also, I wish I had a sample I could hold up and show you. I, I should have thought of that. Um, and then it's going to look at another set of genes. And basically these are genes that, you know, they're, they're things that affect us kinesiologically. It's looking at muscle typing, fast twitch, slow twitch. That's a genetic factor that everybody's not the same with that. So if I'm going to the gym and I've been stuck in doing the same thing forever, and it just seems like it's doing me no good. And then all of a sudden I get a report that says, you know what, actually you should be doing this. And it's some people will confirm hit or burst fitness. Some people, it'll, it'll be just the opposite, something different. So it's really just kind of, it's taking their guesswork out of it. And it's, and it's giving them certainty that this is me. This is what I need to do. Not just type of fitness, but quantity, intensity, that type of a thing. And so once a person has that certainty and then they, it just changes their, their mental state, right? Like I know this is what I, I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and so that's, that's great. And same, same with food. I mean, we have spouses do this together frequently and it doesn't mean that they can't eat together, but when that starts rolling out through, you know, some of the different serving units and by the way, you talked about macros and that kind of thing in this program, they really do not have to count grams of proteins, fats, and carbs. We operate on what's called a serving unit concept, which is easier for the typical lay person. So many ounces of this, so many cups of that in these different categories, it gets real easy for them to be able to see. They can see it on a menu. They can see it on them. They understand the amounts easier than trying to count some of those things. So that's what I'm a simple guy, so that's why I like that. But when they start getting the specificity of that in both of those categories, um, it, it, it really does empower them and it gives them some, some, some certainty. And I just, I know I keep using that word over and over, certainty, but, and side note, you know, I don't even know if you know about this yet, but, you know, a couple of our buddies, the, the Peffer brothers, you know, who are also Activate Docs, they're, they have taken this fitness piece and they are doing, they're doing a series of videos, which is going to be able to be injected into our program where it's like, Hey, uh, you know, Jay, you are, um, high intensity, you know, burst kind of stuff. And, and then that you can, you'll be able to link in and, and their team is doing videos of fitness stuff to where, Hey, this is, this fits for you. So you click, you click your link and it's going to walk you right through some stuff. So that's the next, that's our next level. And that's going to be cool stuff. So it's not me trying to teach in the clinic, my people, how to do fitness. Like here, here's a link, go check it out. So I love that. Yeah. Certainty is key, right? For yeah. anything, when you remove confusion, you create confidence and, and confidently to go ahead knowing that you're on the right path. So that's such a big key. And that's why you kept repeating that. And the other the thing that you mentioned, what I like about Activate that sets, sets it aside for most other weight loss programs. And, and, and again, you know, I hate to use that term, but just for, from a, from a um, awareness kind of uh, for this conversation, Calorie counting sucks. I mean, I know yeah. going into an app and putting what you ate in count that just sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and, and, that's, and, and that's one thing in the in the development of this. And, and again, I I give from a from the the onset of development, I give most credit to Dr. Damon. He he did a great job of keeping it simple. Um, yeah. That's you know he had been a, a piece of other programs, and that's one thing. like this is too complicated. It's got to be simple. Um, so he did a great job with that. Uh, Bart, is there any people or person or type or condition or person um, that can't utilize Activate? Well, that's a great question. I get it sometimes. Um, and, and here, that's a piece of a, in my clinics, this program is non-BART dependent. Like it is rolling without me around for 90% of the thing. And, and I know Pam's got coaches and stuff she uses as well. Um, for me, I do an initial connect with the person just because I like to see their intake form and I like to ask them if they've got certain conditions or whatever, um, just to kind of give them that. First of all, they know somebody's watching clinically, doctor wise, they know somebody's involved to a little bit of it. I'm, I'm doing a little oversight. But to answer your question, this is the only people that I've ever seen like, we got we to gotta think about this. Usually they're elderly. Usually, if not that, they have had um, significant health issues. Okay. So, and I know that you say like, wait a minute, if, 
if somebody just had a heart attack or somebody just came out of cancer, like they need to lose weight if they're obese, right? Yes, they do. But like right now may not be the time. Okay, so somebody's came out of a major heart situation and they're just not even really stable or rehabbed yet. Um, they definitely need to lose weight. So that's when I'll connect, you know, I'll send a little letter. Hey, this is, you know, so-and-so came in. I know this is their situation. Here's what I do. Doc, let me, and we work with a lot of different, you know, physician, heart people, that kind of thing. Like, let us know when he's ready. And they love that. They appreciate that because it's not always the right time, even though in our mind, it's like, yeah, they can lose, they need to lose weight as fast as they can. So that's the only real time that I see that is recent cancer, been through the treatment, been through the chemo, that kind of thing, or somebody who's just unstable health-wise, and it's just hard to even, even, um, you know, get them to that point. But a question might be like, could a, could a type two diabetic do this? Could a type one diabetic do this? Because they're pretty, you know, they're pretty unstable sometimes. And the answer is absolutely yes. Have tons of them do it. Just got to coach them. It's unbelievable how many diabetics, especially type two diabetics are completely ignorant to what the heck's going on. They're on medications, they are on insulin, they're on pumps and they don't understand them and they don't know how to eat. And so those kind of people absolutely should be. Doesn't mean you have to manage them. It means you, you start getting them to where they can, their blood sugars do come down. They do come into control. Then you just simply communicate with their doc and say, hey, here's what they're doing. You need to be stay tu staying tuned to them. And I've told them that they're, they're completely clueless as to what a low feels like, those kinds of things. So not to jump down that too much, but, but, but the whole thing is Look, if somebody's overweight and certainly clinically obese, they need what we do. So Bart, let's talk about it from the, the practitioner um, mindset. Mm -hmm. So Doc's listening to this. Sounds good. Sounds like this is something I'm interested and want to learn more about. How do, how do, what does it look like from an implementation standpoint? You did mention that it doesn't have to be doctor dependent. They could have coaches. Um, so rather than asking a million questions, I want to get to like training the coaches because sometimes mm -hmm. that could be a challenge in the accountability. How much square footage they need? Like, what does it look like for them to get started? Great question. Square footage, most people operate out of a, either a, a cons consultation room or some even an adjusting room, right? Wherever you do an exam or you got some room to do a little bit of consulting. Usually we like it to, they're, them to be able to have a, at least a small room to where that's the place where they could set up their computerized body composition analysis machine and your staff person can be doing consultations. The reason we want that is because we want this to build. Like we don't want it to be like, we don't want to get in the doctor's way. Um, we want them to continue to do what they're doing. We don't want to crimp their capacity. They need to stay focused on it. If they can align for, if they choose to be a part of making a little touch. And we, by the way, we've got docs who don't even do the initial consultations. They don't do that. The staff person will introduce the doctor. Hey, this is Dr. Bart. He'll be, you know, he kind of oversights everything, but I'm going to go ahead and do your consultation today. So the space is minimal. A room is what we typically tell a person. Um, training. We've got that all in place. We feel like we, we, it, we have a, a training dashboard uh, as a part of our you know, provider website. Step by step, we have a, um, one of our team, a, a lady by the name of Carrie Kuhal, walks each doctor, each staff person through it. A lot of the doctors like to participate because they want to know what's going on, which I think is good. It can be done, you know, on their own time, leisure time. Um, but definitely we have the person on their team who's going to be in charge of it. A lot of times they start with a CA or another staff person. Maybe it's somebody who's a therapist or something who would be good, fit the part, likes it and could do the role. They start with them until it gets building a little more. And as it builds more, they might have a specific and separate person on their team that's just handling weight loss because what we want to see is any of those follow-up visits, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, we just want that to be rolling while the doctor is not even, you know, he's really not even, um, the only time he's called on is when there's some situation where the, the, the staff person wants to say, hey, you know, Bob's um, feeling a little weak. Okay, tell him to do that. I mean, it's Q&A, like we've got all the FAQs. So, so they walk through step-by-step -step on the website. That's coupled with some phone calls, you know, some with me, some with Carrie, some with, um, um, uh, one of our coaches, Dr. Dave Nybauer, who coaches a lot of the docs. Um, so we just kind of mix those two. And then once they're through that training, uh, we arrange for one of us, a lot of times it's Dr. Dave uh, or I, we go, we go to, their, to their place. We want to go to their, make sure they got things set up, make sure they understand it. Let's role play, let's do it. And that's just all part of that normal training setup that we like to do. So some on-site training as well. So a lot of support. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, there's always support ongoing specific to the weight loss part of the practice. You know, we have typically we do a couple calls per month with them, uh, be it the doctor and or the staff. Uh, again, we don't want to add calls to the doctor if the doctor doesn't want to be doing it. Um, yes. If you got a good staff person, let us handle that piece. Let us coach them and train them and let it be happening in your clinic while you're not, you're not, you know, micromanaging it. Uh, and then we have like a monthly group call where everybody's on, where we share, you know, a lot about um, different um, um, uh, operational things. We always talk marketing things. There's a lot of done for you marketing in our system and programs. So we always want to update that. Um, and then just some, you know, some, some big picture stuff that, that, that we like to share on a monthly basis. Yeah. yeah. Support. I've listened to the calls because Pam usually takes them from, from home and, and they're great. Okay. Dr. Dave, yourself are, are great coaches. And it's not just from the, the operational standpoint. It's, it's also about, you know, again, right. You got to be in the right head space. You know, you, you've got to be focused on serving and loving people. And because I know one of the questions I'm sure people are thinking is, well, you know, how do I find people? And you know to 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 get them into the program. And my response is: well, forty percent of the population is obese, seventy-one percent is overweight, which means seventy-one percent of your practice can use Activate. So yep. you've got an immediate feeder system, but you also have marketing, which is different to help drive uh, um, leads uh, and convert those leads into the practice and into Activate. So it's comprehensive. Yeah, yeah, and don't forget, you make a great point. Most clinics could, if you just talk about this being, being an expanded model of my wellness, if, my, if, if I'm about wellness, this is, this is a, if, if look, side note, if we're talking wellness and we are doing nothing to address our patients and our community's weight issues, the percentages, which you just said, I'll challenge your, I'll challenge your claim to being a wellness doctor. That's just me, right. don't be feisty, but I'm telling you, that's my claim. But the people coming in, you have plenty of people coming in who you could help in this way. So a lot of people who are busy, they don't have to do anything external. We teach external, we provide external stuff because look, it's another reason for a person to come to your clinic. I mean, there, and, and how much cross referring can be done? How many people who are morbidly obese also have issues biomechanically, right? How many people who are obese or morbidly obese or even overweight have degenerative issues happening in their spine? If we're only showing an x-ray and talking about degeneration and we're not talking about to them about why this is happening, I think we're missing a piece of the puzzle. A rather large one, I, I would argue. Yeah. Yeah. So great stuff. I mean, I think we've been comprehensive in, in covering what Activate's about, how it works, um, some implementation stuff in the office. Anything we didn't touch on you think would be important to know before um, you let us know how people can contact you if they want to learn more about Activate. Yeah. Well, first, I, I want to, you know, I, I do challenge people on their, 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 their congruency. I, I do. And I think I did that well enough. I always want to make sure that they know that, you know, it's systematized, it's non-doctor dependent. That's a huge piece of the puzzle for people who are busy. Um, and so I always like to hit that. But I also, you know, we talk a lot about being conscious of not just more service, because that is the first piece of the puzzle, right? That's, that's our mindset. That's where we got to come from first. But I think also, you know, so we're talking about, right, we're talking about the, the healing hand, right? The, the, the service hand, and we're talking about the business hand. That's, that's BJ Palmer stuff. That's, that's Sid Williams stuff. And so that piece of the service and, and getting that done is important. But I think also always keeping your mind out for congruent ways. You touched on a little bit, but congruent ways to not just expand my, my wellness model, but to expand my services and thus expand my income. And this is something that is so needed. It's something that is so congruent. And if it's something that can be done in a congruent manner, in a, in a systematized way, why not enjoy sir, the, the benefits, the finances of serving people in bigger and better ways? So I don't wanna skip past that piece. It's a very um, potentially lucrative model that we have. I won't dive into it here, but you know, I think that's something that a person needs to pay attention to. I couldn't agree more. Uh, when you mentioned about congruency, 100%, I, you know, I, back in the day when I wasn't 100% congruency, this is where I came up with this mindset is I want to live long enough so I can eliminate all my congruencies in life. And, you know, and I, I started in practice first and, and really say, okay, if I'm a wellness guy, if this is a wellness practice, then everything we do has to reflect that mindset. And more importantly, it has to support the patient. So the, so we have everything necessary for, for the patient to get 
um, the services they need to get the results that they want. And so I agree with you wholeheartedly in the fact that this is such a big and key component that could be added to anyone's practice that really is going to change lives, number one, and most importantly. And I often say our income is reflected based on the value we create. If you change someone's life, right, with the Activate Metabolics program, they're going to tell their friends, their friends are going to see it, their coworkers are going to see it, and a natural byproduct is financially, you're going to be rewarded very, very well. It's a win-win, and it's just something that I would, I strongly encourage everyone to consider to add to their practice model if wellness is a part of their model. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, not to steer backwards, but you know, we talked about within your clinic, how easy it can be. And I know Pam and her team, and, and, and I know the Peppers and you know, other people that you guys know um, are doing this is it just becomes a part of our protocol. I always use the word protocol. You can use the word system, but protocol, if your protocol begins to change that when a person comes in on day one, part of the protocol is they step on the computerized body comp analysis machine for about 30 seconds, just like in many clinics, they weigh them in. No, we just do that. So you weigh in and we don't even have to cover it. If they're 100 pounds overweight, we're not talking about it on day one because they came in for some other issue, if they did, right? They came in for low back pain or whatever. So the doctor, we just have the simple scripting down that in, the, in their report, the doctor says, hey, this, you came in for back pain. We did this. You're in the red here sometime in, in a few places. That just means they're not good measures. And so if the doctor simply says, I want to get your permission that as we, as we progress through getting you better toward moving you toward wellness, I want to get your permission that later you and I can have a conversation about that. Is that cool if we did that? Oh yeah, doc, that's sure. So now you handle the primary condition that they came in for. That's their world. That's their complaint. And then as they get better and as the time arises, you can say, look, Joe, I'm glad you're feeling better. You're doing so much better. Functionally, you're doing better. We are on the right track with your chiropractic care. Now, let me explain to you. Remember this thing? You gave me permission. I want to talk about this because this is actually a contributory factor to what you were experiencing back there. And it's talking about your way. It's just an easy opening. They, by this time, they have trust in you. You've, you've got results for them. And they're going to listen to what you have to say about these statistics and about how you have a solution for them, science-based, clinically-based, to help them with their weight issue, which who doesn't want to take care of that? So anyway, I, did, I didn't want to go backwards, but but the whole thing is within a wellness model. That's how we do it. I love it. I love it. I really, um, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your passion and, and sharing, um, you know, about Activate. Because as I tell my clients all the time, I am always looking out for ways to add value to them, to, uh, to expand their mindset, to expand perhaps their business model. Um, because a lot of times we get caught in our little cocoons, our little echo chambers, and we get caught up doing the same thing over and over and over, and we wonder why we don't grow. And so I want to thank you for coming on, explaining about Activate. How can um, my members contact with you, connect with you if they want to learn more? Sure. And I say, pardon my dog barking in the background. <laughs> happens every time. Happens every time. But um, yeah, um, so... I am so open to your, your folks, your, your, your contacts, you know, connecting with me. I always welcome that. Um, first of all, you can just call my cell phone or you can shoot me a text. I'm always happy to give that out to, to folks like you guys. So it's 812-239-8223. So reach out that way. Sometimes that's fastest and easiest. If you want to shoot me an email, it's just Dr. Bart Anderson at Gmail. So Dr. Bart Anderson at Gmail shoot me an email. Um, yeah, you, you can do that. You can obviously, you can check out our, um, um, you know, our website. If you want to learn more that way, it's activ activatemetabolics.com. Um, if you want to learn that, you can acquire that way too. So yeah, I'm happy to chat. Um, as you may imagine, I'm passionate, but I'm not a high pressure guy. If a person says, or a, a, a doctor says, you know, it sounds interesting, but it just doesn't feel like a good fit for me. No harm, no foul. I don't make any judgment on that, but I always say, get all the information make a good informed decision and, and just know that if you say like, I would love to do this. I just, it just feels overwhelming. It's not going to be, we got it chunked down. So it's, it's applicable to really any doc who wants to try to do it. Very cool. And that's Dr. Bart Anderson, S O N. Yeah. I just want to clarify that here in the Midwest, there's some S E N S. That's, that's a good, good clarification. 
<laughs> and it's Bart, B-A-R-T. You can't mess that up. It's actually for, for the Packers fans up in your area. I was named after Bart Starr, literally. My dad was a football coach and a Lombardi fan. So that's who I was named after. That's cool. That's cool. That I, remember, I remember you telling me that story. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. I didn't pan out probably like my dad wanted me to. <laughs> standpoint, but. I, I, I'm sure he's more than proud. He's been more than proud of you for a long time. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> so. So thanks for coming hey, on. I, I thanks for having me on, Jay. It's fun to chat. Uh, always good stuff. I love brainstorming with you. And um, I, I welcome any of your, any of your peeps to uh, reach out and connect. Yeah, I'm sure that'll happen. So and I wanted to do it this way so we can introduce it. They can consume it at their convenience and leisure. Yeah. And depending what kind of feedback we get, might have you back on and we'll just have an open Q&A where everyone can ask all their questions at once. So we'll look at maybe doing that as well, too. I'd be happy to do that. All right, brother. You take care. All right. You too. Thanks again.